My name is Larry Egan. I'm the uh, Professor of uh, Clinical Pharmacology at NUI Galway and I'm a Consultant uh, Physician in Gastroenterology and Clinical Pharmacology at Galway University Hospitals. Well, our research project is directed at trying to understand um, the role of inflammation in the spread of colon cancer throughout the body. We specifically looked at a protein in cells called NF-kappa B which uh, increases the inflammatory environment and uh, our goal was to understand whether or not and, and if so how that factor promoted the spread of colon cancer cells through the body. Normally uh, the body's own immune system protects us against colon cancer and the spread of colon cancer and other cancers uh, throughout the body. Uh, what we have discovered is that this uh, factor NF-kappa B in colon cancer cells seems to be able to cause a switch in the body's own immune system such that the, that the immune system rather than protecting us against cancer actually is involved in the, in the promotion of cancer. Clinical scientists who understand both the basic science aspects of research and also the clinical needs uh, have a chance to influence the re research agenda such that the research is focused on uh, discoveries that will lead to uh, uh, patient benefits as quickly as possible. I'm Professor Tom Cotter and I'm Professor of Biochemistry here in UCC since 1995. Most of my projects have been in the leukaemia area, uh, focusing on chronic myelocytic leukaemia and also on acute myelocytic leukaemia. The real success story in cancer is the way we treat leukaemia, and uh, particularly the way we treat chronic myelocytic leukaemia. And in the mid-90s, research work in my laboratory showed that a gene called BCR ABLE, which causes chronic myelocytic leukemia, also enables these cells to survive beyond their cell by date. So when these cells should die, they actually continue to survive. And we demonstrated that. And I think since then, there are 400 other laboratories around the world who've actually cited this very important piece of work. And this piece of work, of course, was supported by the Irish Cancer Society. I got into cancer research about 25 years ago, and I can still remember the Tuesday morning I saw my first ever live cancer cells down the microscope. And they made the hairs of my neck stand up, and the reason for that is that those very cells which were alive had actually come from a patient who had been dead for about five years. Now those same cells are alive and living in several laboratories across the world, and yet that patient is dead for nearly 30 years. My name is Bill Watson. Um, I work in the School of Medicine and Medical Science here in University College Dublin and in the Conway Institute in the building behind me. So in 2003 the Irish Cancer Society had the foresight of funding um, a project in the area of prostate cancer uh, and part of that call was to encourage people to form uh, collaborations and uh, to get people to work together. So at the same time uh, the Dublin Molecular Medicine Centre which is now the Molecular Medicine Ireland had come together which was creating collaborations between uh, the Royal College of Surgeons, University College Dublin and Trinity College Dublin. So uh, Professor Mark Lawler, um, Professor Donald Hollywood and myself came together uh, to establish for the first time the Prostate Cancer Research Consortium which is a, a creation or a, a collaboration of clinicians, pathologists, research nurses and scientists to come uh, together and work together uh, in the area of prostate cancer, both in the diagnosis and the treatment. So we've identified a panel of um, markers that can be detected in both the blood and the urine of men with prostate cancer. This could be used to help them to determine what is the most appropriate treatment strategy for them. And these are very exciting results and oops, demonstrated by the fact that we are international collaborators in, in Australia and in Europe have now taken these and are validating them in much larger cohorts of patients, which is a, a very important step before we bring them into clinical utilization. 